Hey guys, welcome back to Main Valley TV and Outdoors, where we do all things all-terrain. If you guys have been watching the series, we have a 10-acre property we're trying to build a trail on, and there's lots of swamp and tight space, so there's only a few ways that we're going to be able to pull logs out of there, so that's why we're going to be talking about log skitters, so stay tuned. So first thing you're gonna see is uh, I kind of threw my wallet at this. I'm fully aware that it looks like a jingle truck, but here's the thing. This is one of those videos where I don't act like I know what I'm doing. We're gonna go out there and try some stuff and we're gonna learn together. So I'm sure a lot of helpful tips as always are going to be provided by you guys in the comments section, but this is kind of my little experiment and what I think in my head I needed. This is the second iteration. I did go out and test and I did pull a couple logs already and I left some of the big ones back there to put this thing to the test. So I did learn a few things about the original setup, but first we're gonna talk about how we got here. This is actually a log skitter. The original black frame is provided by Huckabones Equipment. I did purchase it. It is manufactured by Creek Bank Welding. They kind of manufacture a bunch of uh, farm and agriculture equipment, and they also do uh, these little skitters. When I purchased this, the first thing I did was I asked Huckabones Equipment, they're a Kubota dealer not too far from me, I asked them to weld some chain hooks on because I knew right away that when I pull a log up, I want to be able to store it on a chain. So these are additions, the first thing that we did. It did come with an electric winch, and what I did was I basically wired it up to a couple uh, booster cables so that I can hook it up to whatever machine's towing it. I figured that's kind of the best way to go at it. So that way I can put it behind my tractor, my ATV, my UTV, whatever I end up doing. So I, I'm kind of universal that way. You kind of just pick this thing up and go do the job. That's the idea. The next thing I added was uh, the chainsaw mount. Obviously you're gonna want a chainsaw with you for the most part. We added that and that same bracket is actually holding an ammo can which has like wedges and saw uh, sharpening tools and a bunch of other stuff. It does come with a wireless remote and I never got around to it but it does actually have another switch on board right here so that you can actually run the winch, winch from there too. The next thing I did was when I did pull out a couple logs back there, um, it did have a steel wire rope on it, which is nothing wrong with that. The issue I had was it was already kinked when it was reeled up. So whoever at the manufacturer uh, must have kind of kinked the cable when it was reeling up, so it was damaged already. And uh, I had a bunch of fraying happen when I went to go pull a couple logs out. So I am a fan of steel wire rope. I don't think it's great in this application just because of the kind of cinching and winching we're gonna be doing. I think that synthetic is gonna be the way to go. It's also a lot safer generally. So I immediately went on to the interwebs and found the cheapest synthetic rope I could find. Uh, I also have a bunch of little accessories that I've had kind of stowed away from different winch setups over the years. So I have different hooks and clevises and D rings whatever you want to call them. So I kind of just outfitted it with whatever I already had. So now that we have the synthetic rope done, uh, I needed a couple ways to basically choke or store the logs. So the first thing, this is also from Huckabones, but you can get them anywhere. They're pretty universal, is a choke chain. And this one basically has a little draw bar. And the perk to that is you can slide this under the log and you can grab it from the other side. And we'll show that in use probably today. The other chain is for when I do have a log winched up, I can wrap it around the log, put it on the storage hooks that I was telling you about, and let go of the winch so that it's actually on the chains and not the winch. Now these are pretty common in logging, so I'm not going to say I invented it or anything, of course, but I found a cheap one, again, on the interwebs. And basically the way this works is you can get onto anything about 18 inches and below. It hooks on. And the more you pull, the tighter this actually grabs onto the log. So this is a pretty common setup in, in actual logging. This is kind of just a micro scale of that. There are some other things that I'm not overly uh, pumped about. I tried mounting this cant hook and I kind of just put these rubber hooks on. I have little faith in this actually making it, but it was the solution I could come up with as fast as possible. I'm gonna have to do something a little bit better than this, but this allows me to have the cant hook. This is not something I have to have, but kind of wanted to have, or at least I imagined having. So because I have the winch hook on here, um, this doesn't actually grab chain. As you can see with these storage hooks, for example, the way they work is you can actually slip the chain over them, right? But if I want to winch an actual chain, 
this will just slide through and it won't actually grab chain. So I made this D-ring uh, and this one actually has one of those storage hooks on it so I can winch chain in instead of using this here or just choking with the synthetic rope. So I kind of came up with whatever I could. It's kind of, you know, a bit of a jingle truck, gypsy caravan kind of thing, but I think that this is everything that I'll need to pull out some logs. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. Suggestions, of course, same thing. But that's kind of the tour of what's going on here. And I'm gonna show it in practicality. I'm gonna bring it out there and uh, we're gonna use it and talk about those features as we go. So one of the things about this property is the first section to access the entire rest of it is very swampy. Now, the one thing that in, in my mind that is great about this setup is I can kind of park on the trail, point it towards something. And if I have to get a log out of here, I can winch it to the trail. And that's kind of the goal. An example of that is actually right here. So you can see this guy. So I can cut up a bunch of sections and actually kind of tow that towards the trail and then you know brush it up or do whatever I have to do so one of the applications is this swamp application so uh, I think that especially with this hook setup I can kind of winch whatever so if I find a 10 inch 12 inch 14 inch log or whatever I can pull it to the trail instead of trying to go to it in the bush this is the first portion this is the swamp. I did get some drone shots. I'll make sure to get you guys a, a view of that. This is what we've been working on steady. So all of this is filled in with as much rock as we could get. I had a huge pile of rock at the back. So a lot of folks came out to help me with that. There's a great video if you want to check it out. So all of that rock was laid in to try and help create a base in this swamp. Because every year it seems to be disappearing, at least historically from what I gather from neighbors. I've only lived here a year. But because of that, we have the rock, and then I put chip on top just because it was easy to do right away so I had access to get back here. The next step, at least in my mind, is corduroy. So we take logs and we put them on top. The goal is to just get back here, have access, and continue using the rest of the property. And I think this is the perfect tool to help with that job. So now we're in a location that we took down a bunch of trees in. So I'm going to guess several years ago, two very big trees came down, which is right here. So that right there is an oak of what kind, I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me out. I'll show you some details in a moment. This here is like an ash basswood, like kind of junk tree, firewood at best, if you want for like a campfire. But this whole thing, you can actually see, was toppled over and we had a ton of sprung trees underneath, so it was quite dangerous. Fortunately, my uncle, a logger for 25, 30 years, quite a long time, he came out and helped me navigate how to do that safely. Can I operate a saw? Sure. Am I a logger or an arborist? Absolutely not. I am a homeowner saw enthusiast we'll say we got a lot of that down safely and then after that the same crew that helped me with the uh, rocks and the trail helped me kind of buck all this up so 
that pile and that pile way out there, those are going to be for more wood chips to put on that trail after the corduroy and for this other section here. So we're trying to make use of all of this. These two big chunks of oak, what I left them for is I'm going to turn them into um, benches for the fire pit. Something about me just doesn't want to turn them into firewood. The rest of that oak was turned into firewood and it's already at the house drying bucked up. But these two chunks right here, these are what we are going to be pulling out of here today. These are not small, but these are what I'm going to hopefully saw in half, turn them into benches and put them around the fire pit. So I'll lacquer them up, remove all the bark and make them into nice little seats. That's the plan. But first I got to get them out of here. The big reason is there's a bunch of poison ivy that I'm laying in right now. Basically this whole area right here is poison ivy and uh, I've been rolling around in it. I have had poison ivy for about six weeks and I was stubborn and didn't go to a doctor. But anyway, I did and got a bunch of steroids. So right now I'm basically bulletproof. So I wanted to pull these out of here while I'm on these steroids. So these are not light. I don't have exact measurements. We will when we get them out of here, but I'm going to pull them back to the house so that I can start turning them in in benches. Okay, so this first log, this is the oak. I don't know how old this thing is, but I can tell you everyone watching this video was not around when this thing was already a hundred. So I don't know what that's going to weigh, what kind of oak that is, but I can tell you this is definitely exceeding that setup. So if I can pull this out of here, then I can do anything that I need to do with that skitter. <laughs> Let's get it. So there's that. Got the chain. back over this thing for sure so far not so good I pinched the leads to my battery cable <laughs> that's no good so the winch is broken but I've seen another way to do this so I'm going to try and manually lift this log into place and then back the quad into it and then I'll go fix the winch <sighs> There we go. So now we have the log up. It's not the way I wanted to do it. I'm breaking a sweat now, but this log is extreme for what this is. So
but yeah, once I got going down the trail, it was no problem whatsoever. Uh, I can tell you that that is way heavier than I thought it was. I'm going to get you guys some measurements so you uh, log types can tell me exactly what this thing actually weighs. And I'm going to go rewire the winch uh, so I can go get the second one. The second one is shorter, but it's also the butt of the tree, so the base of it's significantly larger. This has got to be a couple thousand pounds. Um, <laughs> we got it out of there. The last uh, couple hills, whew, that was something. But Okay, I temporarily rewired the uh, winch. It's kind of a permanent bush fix. If it works, it's usually how it stays until I break it again. But I'm going to reel all this back up and uh, we should be good to go to go get the second log. Let's go get it. So before we get the second log, I just wanted to measure this one to see if we can get a weight. I don't know what type of oak it is, so I'll uh, leave that up to you guys. Maybe I can figure it out afterwards, but I'll get you some dimensions so we can kind of estimate what this thing weighs. So it's nine foot long. And it's 20 inches at the butt and basically 19 and a half at the top. All right, let's see if we can get smarter because coming uphill with all of these stumps there's a big dip right here. Like this was the worst way to pull out that oak. <laughs> like the worst way to do that. So to get this one, how do we do that better? I think is the question. This time we do have more room, but it's two uphill big sections and it's a mess. So I think in a perfect world, we actually can go out a different way. So the butt, this one's significantly bigger, which I think. So the butt of this one is 22 inches, but it's a little bit shorter, I believe. So this one's only seven foot, so it's two feet shorter, but it's a couple inches larger in diameter. So it's probably similar in weight. The issue is, I think that's an 18 inch log arch. I'll have to measure that. But uh, what's this side? This side is 18. So in a perfect world, I grab this side, but I've got a bunch of stuff in the way and I don't want to go this way again. Before I get to work here, I wanted to show you guys the base of this oak right here. So I don't know how many rings are in there or anything like that, but you can certainly see it's not young. So the, the base of this is about 28 inches, um, like right about there, 28 inches or so. So I don't know how old this would be. I don't know if this bark helps you guys identify what kind of oak this is. Keep in mind we're in, you know, well, northeastern Ontario. When this fell over though, it, like I said, it was sprung up on a bunch of trees and it was actually still growing and the root system was still attached. So it was very much so alive when I cut it. It was just down on the ground and there was like six or so little trees basically holding it up along with... Uh, I'm going to call this basswood. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it did work too. The more I can rotate it into this direction, the better. Oh. 
there. <laughs> it's well off the ground at this point, so I could definitely chain it up and see how we do. Should be able to let it down now. Perfect timing. Cass is going to see my walk of shame. Oh, no. I heard oh, everything was going perfectly up until it didn't. Some juice. juice. Actual juice. Oh, <laughs> um, oh, diesel right there, dude. Every time, actually. So I ran over the, you know, the farmer's fence. Yep. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but I ran over it. So I got to cut it all up. You know, it's one of those things like, oh, I'll do it later. Well, now's later. But you want to go for now. you want to go for a walk? Yeah. Come on, Diesel. So so far, everything is going way better than I thought. To be honest with you, the issue is uh, the loosen up behind the wheel. It seems even just between the first and second walk, I learned so much about how to actually use it in this scenario that. I'm way better off now. Now again, to let you guys know, this is like the absolute extreme this thing's ever gonna do and it's doing it. So most of the logs that I'm dealing with, you know, they're gonna be little guys. Like all of this little stuff here. In the spring and in the fall, all of this is just soaked. So I can park on the trail here and just winch all that stuff in. It'll handle that stuff like a dream. That's why I actually bought it. Pulling these two oaks out, that's just kind of a extreme test. If it can do that, it can do anything I need it to do.
So there it is, a couple thousand pounds of oak, I'm guessing. They're not light, I can tell you that. It did the job. This is the absolute worst case scenario. This is way beyond what it was supposed to do. And if it can do this, it can do anything that I need in the backyard. So this has proven to me that it works. I know how to use it a lot better. So user error was certainly uh, part of the, the fiasco here today. But when I pull little logs like this guy here, especially lighter wood, um, it's, it's a dream. It doesn't even feel this. So I pulled this out no problem. And uh, these obviously came out, never gave me any grief other than, like I said, user error. So there it is. <laughs> Pretty unreal. I think a uh, wider platform, like a side-by-side, -side, might be a little more planted. And obviously, these tires are not for what I am doing today. So I was at several disadvantages. Power was not one of them. Grip certainly was. Especially when it came to all the different roots and rocks and inclines and stuff that I was dealing with. But hey, we got the job done. Here they are. I'm excited to show you guys this when it's done. So I hope uh, that shows you a little bit about log skidding with an ATV and the way I did it. So uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. We'll see you guys next time.